harsh solar wind, and cosmic radiation would have been scouring the planet for millennia. It's tough to imagine how even primitive life could survive here. But back in 1892, Camille Flammarion was still filling his imaginary Martian canals with water. He speculated they were the rectification of old rivers by the inhabitants for the purpose of general water distribution, and that the actual habitation of Mars by being superior to our own is very probable. Pouring more into Flammarion's illusory waterworks, Pickering asserted that he had observed up to 40 lakes. At about the same time, a wealthy, world-traveling American diplomat was feeling like he needed a career change and a personal passion project. Percival Lowell had read Flammarion's books, and he made plans to look for Martians during the coming opposition of 1894. Pickering helped Lowell rig two telescopes on a hilltop in Flagstaff, Arizona. The new Lowell Observatory stared at Mars all summer long. But Lowell, an untrained observer, saw only what he believed. He sketched a planet-wide irrigation system, transporting billions of gallons of melted polar snow to equatorial oases. The irrigated agriculture projects of an advanced race. But during the same opposition, Astronomer Edward Barnard, wielding the California Lick Observatory's larger refracting telescope, could not find a single straight line anywhere on Mars. And when the Lick's William Campbell examined Mars with a spectroscope, he saw not a trace of water. English astronomer Edward Maunder demonstrated how straight lines on Mars could easily be optical illusions. Undeterred, Percival Lowell sprinted across America on a lecture tour in 1895, promoting his book named simply, Mars. A story-thirsty public bought his tales of Martian waterworks by the thousands. In 